is a CDE ResMap 168, it's a wafer resistance mapper. Got a cassette of uh, wafers loaded. I'm going to show you one, and it's at position one. Uh, I've got it all set up already, so so with that it'll go there. And we're using uh, the bid uh, bid one recipe, uh, which is in the uh, bid project folder under 4MP. So you can see the directory shows up here. You can change different information according to what you need to do. Uh, and here it shows you all the positions in the in the cassette uh, that you could test and you can uncheck or check as you wish. And as you can see down here, I've got position number one checked. And at this point, I'm going to run this one CD so you can see this one run and then I'll go backwards and show you some of the other uh, parameters here. So let keep there on there. I'm going to open the lid. This way you can actually see what goes on under the hood while it's running. You're going to see the probe come out and take the wafer in. And you can see while it's reading this, this is the actually the part, this is the probe that actually makes contact with the wafer. So that's why it has moved over here. So it's a combination of the uh, uh, mechanism to load the wafer plus what makes the readings. Now if you come over and look at the screen. Once it has ascertained that it has actually got a wafer there and that it's readable, and the way you, depending on how you set it up, and I've set it up for 13 points, and it'll go to those 13 points and take a resistance measurement at each one of those points. And then it'll give you various results depending on how you've set up the parameters. So you can see up here, there were 13 points it did, 13 points were okay. It's moving, it's taking the chuck right now off of here, putting it back into the cassette. Okay, once it's completed, it'll come up with the screen. If you have done more than one wafers, it would list all the wafers here. And from this part, we can highlight the ro row that we're interested in observing. Uh, and then read selected file, and it'll show you a resistance map according to how many points, etc. It shows you where all the points were taken. Uh, and then there's you can do other plot options, uh, for instance, a three dimensional plot. And it shows you a three dimensional view of the way for how it came out. Again, all according to the parameters that you set up. This can be rotated, so it's pretty powerful software. There's different plot options that come up, different uh, other plots. You can do a, a wafer data plot, which shows you what you originally had. And shows you your readings down here, standard deviation, uh, a bunch of information that you need. I'm gonna close this window. Close this window. And I'm just going to show you one more screen here that's important, and that's the utility screen and control. 
Uh, what's important here, you can do all settings, turn things on and off, test them. Uh, it's a good screen uh, to be able to make sure everything's working or if there's an error, you can uh, go here and see what's going on. Some things are not pertaining to this machine. For instance, there's no light tower control, you know, so ignore that. Your calibration is done here. One thing that's real important on this screen are these files. These are your parameter files. And you can see right now, uh, for instance, the motion coordinate is using uh, 4PMTCRD.PRM. Um, that changes according to what's diameter of wafer that you have. So you want to make sure you have the right ones, otherwise you could have a potential jam. If you wanted to start this up and just check everything that everything's working, you could go to Home All Motors, and it'll give you shows you what it's doing and that it's homing these things. And you can hear it in the background. And conversely, you can also jog these different motors in different directions. You can load and unload uh, a, a single wafer uh, from the cassette and tell it what, it'll come up and tell you what position. And you can also turn your vacuum on and off. And uh, you can do a cycle loader where it goes through the whole thing. Well, this just to be able to test it out and uh, to set your probe contacts. It's also very important for if you change the probe, you want to be able to uh, adjust it uh, properly. We can look over. Okay, here's your probe. It's held to get held on with a Allen screw that uh, goes through here. So you would loosen this up. The probe would pop out, and there's a connection here for the for the probe uh, electrical connections. This probe will be removed and, and packaged for shipping. Uh, so you'll need to reinstall it. Just push it in uh, so that it seats fully. Tighten up the uh, Allen screw and that should be all ready to go. There's no alignment procedure except for the fact that it sits fully into the holder. I just want to <laughs> you have a ribbon cable that connects the computer to the system here. You'll notice that the ribbon cable has a red line on the bottom. And that red line uh, needs to be at the bottom position on here. So you can see how the connection is made. Your vacuum connection is here. Uh, this unit does require a vacuum pump, but does not come with one. And it's 115 volts, and your power switch for this unit is right here. To calibrate the unit, we used a resistance pack in place of the probe and then did a calibration procedure according to the manual.